Hello everyone, this is Padmanaj here. Welcome to this video. In today's video, we are going to look at single sign-on for the Tag dashboard using LDAP. I am at our document page for the same section here. You can read about this configuration as you watch the video. Let me begin by explaining how I have set up LDAP for this demo. I am running LDAP as a Docker container in my machine that you can see over here running on port number 10389. Okay, and if I use Apache Directory Studio to log into my LDAP and look at the contents inside that, you can see that I have created three users here default user, read user, and admin user. Now let's head over to the type dashboard and look at the configurations for the dashboard. In my type dashboard, I have created three different user groups like a read only user group, a default user group which has access only to the analytics section, and the admin group. So if I go into each one of them, you can see that for read only, there is a different UID here ending as 71. And for this user group, I have given only read access for all the sections of the dashboard. Likewise, if I head over to the default one, you can see that the ID is different here ending as 72. And for this group, I have given access only to the analytics section. None other sections have access here. Now the last one is admin, of course, and you can look at the uh, ID ending as 73 and admin as all the privileges in the dashboard. Now, if I head over to the section for single sign on, under the system management, you will see this identity management. Prior to 3.0, we had another component called as Tyke Identity Broker, which was used for all the single sign on related activities. But starting from 3.0, we have integrated TIB into Tyke's dashboard itself under this identity management section. So I have here created a profile and I have named it as my LDAP RBAC profile. So this is something that you can name as you wish. Point to notice this is what you will be using when you're trying to invoke the single sign-on process. So if I click on this particular profile that I have here, I've given a URL upon success and upon failure. Other than that, I have told type where exactly LDAP is running. Since I'm running it on Docker, I've given a Docker specific DNS here. It's running on port number 10389. And here I am telling type how exactly the user DN should be passed so that it can be validated in LDAP. This one will vary according to the kind of LDAP you have. In fact, if you look at our documentation, you will see that the DN for the example given here is different from the DN that I have in my demo here. This is because how the LDAP is set up. So if I head over to Apache Director Studio again, you can see that this is exactly how the user DN is present. Um, so this one you'll have to take care of whenever you're configuring the LDAP. Apart from the basic configuration, I have some advanced configuration also. So let's head over to raw editor. And down below, you will see here a section that is mapping a particular field that we retrieve from LDAP called a CN and matching the value of the CN against the user group ID. Remember I was talking about the user group ending as 717273. Uh, the reason I talked about that is because of this. So what I'm doing in this configuration is that I am taking the value that I'll get from this field called the CN in LDAP. And if the value of CN is matching admin, I'm going to map the user group this, which is admin group. Or if it is read only, I'll do this. If none of these are there, I'm going to go with a default user group ID, which is this one, default one. So if I go back to my Apache Directory Studio, you can see that in all these three users there is a field called a CN which has the distinct value that I have configured like admin read only or default so now according to the user who is getting validated we will retrieve this value and map him against the user group that we have created in our dashboard over here okay let's start the demo let me start by showing you how exactly we're going to do the demo um, for the demo purpose, I have created a simple HTML file that will take two fields, a username and password. And upon clicking submit, it is going to call this particular endpoint of the dashboard. The way it's formed is where exactly the dashboard is running, local machine on the port number, then slash auth, a standard URI, and then the profile name that I have created, my LDAP hardback profile, slash LDAP. So let's use this HTML file on our browser to access it. We could open up the file. Okay. Let's try by giving a wrong password for a particular user called as admin. So I'm going to give a wrong password here and click on login. 
Now you will see that the Ty has denied access saying that the credentials are incorrect and I am not able to log in. So let's just try it again. Now you can see that I'm able to access the dashboard, but as per my user group configuration for default, I can only see the analytics section of the dashboard and no other section as you can see over here. Okay. Now let's log out from this particular user and log in using a different user. Let's try with the read only user. So I'm going to give the credentials for the read user. Click on login. Now you can see that I'm able to see the other sections, but if I head over to any of the section and try to modify something here, let's say change it from four to five, click on update. You will see that Tyke is now restricting me saying that I do not have the permission to edit this because this is a read only user as per our user group configuration for read only group. Yeah. Right. Now let's try the final one, the admin one. I'm going to log off and login again using a different user let's add me now you can see that i am able to access dashboard and in fact if i head over and try to change something here i should be able to do that as well okay that's it for the video thank you for watching bye